Comigo Paraguai. Very sensible. <laughs> Just fuck. <laughs> oh, my, my thumbprints have stopped working. Oh no. I should go and rob a bank. <laughs> They'd never find me. I think maybe. What about the rest of your fingers? Try those. No. I don't Why don't they have fingerprint? activation on firearms. Then they can sell people whatever the fuck they want. That's good. That's pretty good. Yeah. And basically, you have every firearm equipped with thumbprint activation or fingerprint activation and GPS and external shutdown. Oh, God. Okay, now you, you're talking... You're Philip K. Glock. That's who you are. <laughs> Well, I haven't even started my spiel yet. Oh, uh, what? A glockenspiel. <laughs> I thought I actually thought you meant you were going to about to launch into a whole gun control thing that you had pre-prepared. No, I have, no. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, it, wouldn't that kind of satisfy everyone though? In oh, that great. Sense? Well, there's some gun violence happening right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing at a function for the police department on oh, Thursday night. That'd be awesome. I'm gonna. I'm considering asking them to just waive my fee in in return for some hints on how to get out of my sheriff's warrants. <laughs> it's a different department, though, isn't it? Different setup. It is for the transit police. There's transit police. I know it's weird, isn't it? It's the first I knew about it when what? I saw the worksheet too. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, so for public transport? People. No, but I don't no. think. No, because no, I don't think so. Because the the police officer I've been dealing with is a. He's a real police officer. Am I allowed to say that? Oh, I can't wait for the next podcast. Do the transit police get upset? I can't wait for the next podcast to know what the heck is going on. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know there was multiple polices. What the heck? Yeah. Have you turned over a new leaf? Have you gone Christian? Is that why you're pronouncing H the incorrect way? I'm not pronouncing H the incorrect way. Oh, dude. It's so wrong. What's wrong with my pronunciation? (laughs) (laughs) Pronunciation. (laughs) Ah. I think we should try to um, mispronounce <laughs> things for the whole episode. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh lord, oh, you're real loud. Oh, shut up! And I'm just gonna make you less loud. <sighs> Where are we? Um, what? We are at the Duda Gala. The Duda, yeah, not Gala, because yeah. it's Gala. It's Gala. Isn't it G double L A? It's G A double L A. Did you say you? Well, I don't know. I think. It, well, I did. Yeah. Are I, you mispronouncing? I'm clearly misspelling. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. Gala. Right. But with two L's. For some unknown reason, yes. What is the Do to Gala? It's the pub that we're in currently. No, but what? what what's it named after? It's named after something. It's not, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A ship. Right. For those of you not watching the podcast, I pulled a face. I don't know if it's named after a ship. How would I know? It sounds like a ship, though. Oh, in fact, there's the... Uh, <laughs> oh. The mast? No, what do you call it? The figurehead. The figurehead. Yeah. 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 She... Um, do the thing. Um, I'm do not what, sure one which of the thing you meant, but I, I guess you mean this one. That's why God... That's why God made... The I'm shaking my head. No, I didn't mean that one, but I, I love that song. I love that record. Well, let's talk about the movies. Did you see a movie recently? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dom and I just went to see a film called The Disaster Artist, uh, which if you... So, so hang on. You messaged me today to say that it was pre, pre, really, pre-screen? Yeah. It's Advanced not, screenings. It's there not officially released until... It was Thursday. Of course. Because that's when movies get released on a Thursday. Yeah. Uh, I, just before we started recording, I sent my friend Jade a message to say that uh, I gave her a rundown of what I'd done with my day. Um, and <laughs> she a parole officer or something. She likes to know what's happening. Oh, that's nice. 
Jay will send me a message that just says, do it. <laughs> Cute. Yeah. And I hadn't had a chance to respond to it because... Um, you hadn't done anything yet. Oh, <laughs> uh, because I... I'm not a massive drinker, as I'm sure most of you know, so... You're a fucker. Why are you laughing? Because last episode, yeah. you just confessed to drinking too much and too often. <laughs> and you wrote the show notes, which makes me laugh. <laughs> but... I'm not a massive drinker either. But I also said in the episode that I'm not a massive drinker. Just to show you the size of a pint glass. <laughs> a pint glass is literally the size of Matt's head. I would say that's a massive drink. <laughs> Here's mine here. <laughs> oh. hmm. Explains so much. Pilgrim. What size do your beers come in? Uh, we have pots, schooners, pints, and top hats. I'll have a top hat, please. I think there should be more sizes available. <laughs> do you? Yeah, yeah. I get so confused when I go to other states. It's like when you want to buy. I've been. <laughs> it's when you want to buy clothes and it says like you know size to size. It's like, hang on. Well, that socks. You know, when you buy socks, it's mm. 9 to 12. 6 to 10. Well, I'm a, I'm a 9. I don't want... I have to buy big socks. But see, I mean, you'd be able to wear my socks. Because you're, what, 11? To, you're 11? I'm a 10. You're 10. I thought yeah. you had bigger feet than that. No, you're thinking of my penis. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice at the cinema they had, like, um, letter boxes in the... In the yeah, we didn't quite, the kind of get to that because then other people walked in while you were asking and there's us three standing at the <laughs> separate urinals yeah. n- noticeably with like one between each of them because yeah. they were the individual type. Girls, you wouldn't know what urinals look like but um, here's a thing. Yeah. I am going to find it difficult to get back to the thread of what we started right, talking okay. about today but anyway. That's why we need more guests. Here's a thing. Guests help what's, us. What's, no, they don't. I think, okay. I mean, we can have guests, but I don't think it's because they help us. Okay. We're there to help them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, None of us today, when we were at the urinal, did this, but... I washed my hands. Oh, yeah. So did I. Um, Always. Not as a urinal. Uh, (laughs) That's why I washed my hands. (laughs) My, My godmother, who I've spoken about on this podcast once before, who I think I may have described as a bit of a snob... She's lovely. Yeah. She's very good fun. Um, got drunk at a venue one night and walked into the boys' toilets instead of the girls and then came out saying, oh, they've got little showers in there. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm glad she didn't find the little fucking cakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're good. They're good. Um, um, but boys... <sighs> I'm going to say 75% of the time when they're standing at a urinal, particularly when it's a big, like, trough-type one. Yeah. Spit. Yeah. When they're there. Is that weird? Yeah. So they're having a wee. This is for the girls, because the boys know. They're having a wee, and just while they're there, they just kind of... And then just spit into the trough. Yeah, I think that's... um, uh, You only notice that because you see other people do it. I assume. Amazing. That's, That's an incredible uh, so, thing that you've just said. So that means... I only notice it because uh, I've seen yeah, people but, do it. But the point I'm trying to make is... Okay. People behave differently when other people are around. So when... I think there's an element of this um, macho kind of chauvinistic behaviour of... I'm in a fucking male bathroom. I'm holding my dick. Fucking spitting. Yeah, like, but they don't. <laughs> they don't hawk it up and... They, but they just yeah it's not a they just yeah weird do you know what is for me the weirdest thing about the majority of bathrooms these days mm-hmm. other than in the brand new shopping centres mm. is there's hand washing facilities but you still have to touch handles to yeah. go in and out of stuff yeah like there's no like kick Pad thing to open the door with, yeah. or something like that. You know, like you know, um, if you because doors like, all open inwards. Yeah, but by um, virtue of their design, but it's but like lots of places have like a um, an ambulant access where um, you could could touch something with your foot and the door automatically yeah. opens. Uh, I mean, I just think it's hilarious. We know that a lot of people don't wash their hands, and of course, you know, wherever we go, there's handrails to everything and stuff like that. It's like, can I? This is place is obvious people don't wash their hands. I've just seen five people not wash their hands. I often walk 
back into the toilet and grab some toilet paper to open the door and the handle and then drop the toilet paper. That's yeah, yeah. Because it's clear. Um, I. That's one of those things that I, I, I have to have a, a, a um, an implicit disregard for, but otherwise I just I would never leave the house. Yeah, well, it's one of the reasons why I often don't. Because, <laughs> but Paul Shirley is a is. Not a germaphobe, but he's a germaphobe about stuff like that. And yeah. I've seen him stand in a bathroom and wait for someone else to open the door so he can leave. Yep. Which makes perfect sense. Totally, yeah. Because it's gross. Yeah. Because I was going to say boys are gross. Actually, well, all people are gross. All people are yeah. gross. Yeah, all people are gross. But boys are worse. I'm sure more girls wash their hands after they've been to the bathroom than boys. Yeah, uh, yeah. I Almost. Imagine, I imagine that to be yeah. uh, true. Yeah. Because... Mm. Girls are less gross than boys when it comes to stuff like that. Some girls are less gross than some boys, yes. But if we want to paint everyone with the same brush, then yes. Or the toilet brush? Well. <laughs> yeah, but then we can just put the seat down over it as it drips. <laughs> <Later>. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to see this film called The Disaster oh, Rapper. You're good at this. Which was... Uh, I, th- I feel like this, when I go back and listen to this to write the notes, I'm sure there's another thread that started <laughs> that, that is missing yeah, currently. Your auntie or godmother or something. No, 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 we got through that one. Little showers. Yeah. Boys' toilets. That's fine. Um, oh, Jade. Hey, there we go. I reckon that's the only other one. Uh, I gave Jade a rundown on my day and I said that we'd been to see that film and her response to me was, Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Cool. So, she, yeah, so she gets she it. She knows, yeah. She's all right. Um, um, she doesn't listen to the podcast. That's right. She's fucking right. It's not all right. Everyone should listen. Okay. Five-star review on iTunes. That's your job this week. <laughs> all right, then I will. <laughs> you wasn't talking to me. I wasn't talking to uh, you. I gave a, a, a friend of mine a five-star review on his podcast. I can't, I actually, I should have mentioned this before now. Um, my friend Kristen Holland, the bass player from Adam 12. Mm-hmm. Lovely human being. Incredibly talented. He, uh, Great once, voice. Once worked for Ashley and Martin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, in a commercial sense, anyway. You missed the yeah, yeah joke. I did. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Hair Hat. Ah. Um, yeah, talented, talented vocalist. Talented actor. So he's got a podcast called Nocturnal Transmissions, which is him reading horror stories. <laughs> but just... So great. He's got a great, so he's great. Got a great speaking voice. I oh, imagine. and man, awesome, you should yeah. hear him do these things. So he's doing character voices. He's got accents and cool. there's noises and sound effects. It's, and it's all him. It's his whole production thing. And it's fucking great. Cool. I'm going to listen to that. Yeah, you really should, man. So I gave, I gave my first, I, th- I think maybe my first um, iTunes review. Speaking of thirst, you should have a... Don't be parched on my behalf. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I, I was thirsty. Um, um, secondly, we went and saw this film. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we both fa- found it quite an emotional experience. Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you? I just saw myself up there all the whole time. In both being parodied <laughs> and in an earnest representation. Oh. Yeah. So it's the story of a filmmaker named Tommy Wiseau who uh, is of <laughs> no fixed descent. <laughs> um, you, should, you, should, you should first of all check out a film that he made in 2003 called The Room uh, and then see this film called The Disaster Artist. I, I'm known in our circle of friends for crying in films. I uh, only cried twice though. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's just so earnest. About yeah, what he's trying to do. It was, it was. It's quite a remarkable. I haven't seen the room. I know a lot about it. Yeah. Um. And I know there's a, a lot of hoo-ha about this particular f- film, yeah. Disaster Artist. James um, Franco directed and starred in this sort of, which is funny as well. Tree biopic. Yeah, which is funny as well because he starred and directed a, a film about a guy who starred and directed in his own film. Yes. Like, so it's this elements of that. I mean, what will be great is to watch both films multiple times to keep seeing, like, small things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of shot-for-shot shot remakes. So, so James Franco pay, plays the part of Tommy Wiseau in this 
pseudo documentary <laughs> about the making of the film. It's it's quite remarkable, and they do some shot for shot bits. Uh, and it's and at the end of the film, this is not a spoiler. At the end of the film, they show the two films side by side, the original and then the the shot for shot remake of these particular scenes, and it's uncanny yeah, how perfect, close they are, and yeah. all the actors are just so good in those things they've so they've so closely studied and mimicked to get the intonation and the the head movements and everything it's yeah. it's, it's it was amazing yeah yeah well we're saying good suggestion from you thanks because i've been waiting to see it but i i'm yeah. not the i'm not the advanced screening guy oh well, you are well i love that you um you you didn't make fun of me because because you could have when i said because i don't watch well, when i go to the cinema i really don't watch ads and I don't watch trailers I will walk in and out I don't want to see a trailer in a cinema like I don't, I don't want to be in the room when the light's going down I want to walk in as the lights have just gone down and because I don't know something like it's I worked at the cinema for 20 years and my thing was you got to be there at the start of the film but the, everything that happens before that the ads and trailers I just don't want to watch but I do stay up once every three to six months and watch four hours of trailers online because I love watching trailers and I watch them all in one hit and then I go if I want to see the film I mark in my calendar when they're released so I can go and see them on opening day usually is that what I was going to make fun of you about yeah but you didn't well no I wouldn't I, th- I mean it's it's weird, weird. <laughs> but I wouldn't make fun of you well, what, friend. what was funny is we get to the cinema today and I was a little bit late because I came up from Lara and it took me a while to get there and you guys were in the cinema oh sorry we all went in together and I saw that there was a trailer playing and I went it's a good time for me to go get some drinks and by all accounts something had happened with the projector the projector well, just stopped nothing had happened with until the I walked back yeah, into, yeah, as incredible. I walked back in the lights went down yeah. that was yeah, yeah I had nothing man. to do with it yeah you but, did yeah, yeah, um, so yeah I had a headache personality don't I don't like watching ads in the cinema. Hmm. Yeah. I don't like the idea. It's the same thing about watching ads on like pay TV or heaven forbid when they do introduce them to Netflix and something like that. Um, so you go, hang on, I just bought a ticket for something and you're also making money off showing me ads. Yeah. That's bullshit. Uh- Ah. Actually, I didn't buy a ticket today. Thank you for the ticket, by the way. That's all right. Um, it was hard to get. Did you have to go through a process? I had to go through a process because at the box, it says, this, this was this was <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, the Nova in Carlton, which I love. Great place. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen really good films there, mostly. Um, and the box office where there was actually a person. It's a cu- peculiar kind of anomaly for me because quite often I would prefer not like I I'm the self-serve checkout guy at the supermarket yeah I just it's just I mean aside from anything else it's just quicker and easier I put my I just and I bring my own bag and I put my groceries in there where do you shop in preference Woolworths or I'm a Woolworths guy right I'm not because when you go to Coles and it says card only when you press pay the card machine thing FPOS machine lights up because it says card only but at Woolworths you still have to press card or cash even though it says card only okay is that why you that's why I don't go to Woolworths because I was like if you're going to have a self check it like they've Uh, they've got the facility surely to bypass that but then the number of times I occasionally do go to Woolworths like if it's um, there's a Woolworths near me and there's an underground car park and if it's a hot day I've got the dog in the car I was like it means I can go shopping I can like whereas Sprocket's in the car and it's a hot day I, I can't go shopping no, I have to take him over get featured on the news well more to the point I love my dog I don't really care if I get in trouble for anything I'm more concerned about the you dog you hate getting into trouble for things we've discussed this before my point is I don't want my dog to be hurt but yeah I keep going to the self-service checkout I'm like well this is dumb you, this is a whole four seconds of my life you're wasting yeah okay <laughs> okay yeah I'm weird um Two things. One, I, I'm aware that uh, by my use of the self-serve checkout, I'm potentially doing someone out of a job. 
but I'd still rather just do that no. than talk to anyone. That uh, person, that person is, can stock the shelves because people, more people will use the ship market <laughs> because it's an efficient process. Well, uh, today, just now, just now, you said the number of times, yeah, and not the amount of times. And other times in this podcast, you've said the amount of times, and I've wanted to say number. No, okay. Yeah. But today you didn't. Well, it's weird. We already discussed at the start of the podcast. I was going to try to pronounce things better, and yeah, oh. even pronounce number instead of amount, <laughs> but still mean the same thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Anyway, you were trying to buy tickets. Yeah, and uh, the box office, which was manned by someone, which I just thought would be an easier process to buy a. a ticket they would only take cash and I didn't want to pay with cash that's bizarre so I had to go to this little alcove where there was machines and yeah. machines were hard like, well, I mean they shouldn't be and if I explain it they're not pick the movie hit the button great there we are and then what session 2.15 great no worries and then every other button I pushed didn't seem to do anything uh. and then Hmm. And there was people behind me. Yeah. And so I tried the whole process again, <laughs> and it still didn't work. And I said to the girl behind me, and the line of people behind her, I said, it's probably me. I'm not sure. And she said, is it not working? And I said, it's probably me. Do you know what the problem I'll go was? Over here. Hmm? It's because you got no fucking fingerprints. That's what it was. The other reason they want people to use that stuff is so they can identify don't specifically be, don't. you by your viewing slash spending habits. Oh. Dom, no. Yeah. Don't I, think project.org me. I reckon that's true. Don't. Don't. Someone the other day on my Facebook page on something I posted, I can't remember, uh, wrote, check out, oh, like along the lines of, if you think that's bad, check out why we have to fill in all of our passport information, etc., in block capitals. Mm. Mm. Uh, did you? Yeah, I did, but okay. it's, you know, it was some weird post about, I mean, some weird article about how when you write your name in block letters, it means that it's a f some of officially recognised thing and now the government actually owns me and I'm in an employee of oh, the state. Oh, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's interesting. Uh, you know, not particularly interesting way. Um, <laughs> I, I, speaking of... Go on. Touching things with your fingers. Yeah. Um, do, do I need a jingle for this? Uh, fuck it. That's why oh. <laughs> well, apparently it's really short. <laughs> it's nuts. Um, so, you know how um, it was my birthday recently and you bought me some wonderful, amazing headphones? Um, are these noise cancelling headphones I used on my flight to Las Vegas or San Francisco from Auckland I probably wouldn't have just slept basically for 11 and a half hours on the flight had the touch screen worked properly so you know when you kind of you know these touch screens on the back of the the plane seat um, which they're getting rid of in, in a lot of airlines great because nothing worse than some fucking five-year-old sitting behind you going, <laughs> playing some fucking game. Hitting the screen? Yeah. Little bastards. Do they? Yes. Haven't they got, don't they have a, yes. on long-haul flights, don't they have a controller that comes out and does? Not if it's a thing, I think. Like, w w whatever was happening behind me Little on a buggers. flight a year ago. Um, I d and that is, I know I use this phrase a lot and mostly in jest, but that is where I blame the parents. The parents must understand that that oh, they is, don't. is clearly translating to the seat in front no, of them. I, well, further to that, so anyway, I my, my, to finish that story, and that'll move on very quickly, um, is, so I would touch the screen here, and it would select the movie down here. So I had to work out how oh, to... Oh, and then after a little while, I, went, I actually really don't want to see any of these films anyway. So I just slept. I just went, I turned it off. And we're funny enough because the off button was there, but I had to push some other button over here to make it work. Anyway, <laughs> that made me laugh. But here's the thing. So going up to Sydney last week, the guy sitting behind me was easily six foot six. He was a giant, right? His poor, like... His poor legs did not fit in any way which 
in the space allocated to normal people's legs so they had to, his knees had to therefore stick into my butt yeah yeah for an hour yeah. which I was kind of angry about in that sense of this is really annoying and uncomfortable because he was clearly uncomfortable moving sure. around a lot and then therefore poke him in, in the ass a lot because if it just stays in the one place even you can kind of deal with it cause yeah because you, you, you get yes, absolutely um, so I, I oh, sometimes I'm, I can tolerate stuff like that and in this case I did but it makes what can't what are you actually put in when you're buying a seat this is how tall I am this is how my, this is these are my biometrics these are my parameters yeah so yeah. they go all right well you're tall you sit out the front dude mm. like not you're gonna pay extra for the convenience but more along the lines of you're when not we're gonna in a piss. society yeah yeah and if you're a big person you you're like maybe you get the aisle seat or something like that you know yeah. or you get the window seat because it's, it's hard yeah. you know, harder for people to kind of climb over you kind of thing um, that's that's I mean that's the interesting thing with how the price of air travel has decreased so fucking dramatically over the course of the last yeah. 20 years that now so many more people can afford to fly um, that the way then the airlines kind of combat that is to make everything smaller the seats are sure. narrower yeah, yeah, yeah. and the distance is like between yeah. seats is smaller and it's fucking hard for big people to fit in those totally. tiny spaces but it, it brings up other potential questions though doesn't it where you say okay so I'm allowed 7 kilos right Dude. but I'm 74 kilos I right? don't and understand. that guy's 115 and he's allowed 7 kilos like some Effectively, the cost of that ticket gets an extra thirty odd kilos of yeah baggage. <laughs> yeah, like doesn't really seem right. I met um, Tom Downey the other night at a function I was at. So Tom Downey was the ex uh, GWS footballer. Okay. So he quit um, in May this year due to mental health issues. So I met him at this um, fundraiser the band played at the G-Force yep. played at uh, and <clears throat> so all the money from that event went to was split evenly between Movember and Beyond Blue yep. and he was there talking about his experiences he's 6 foot 6 and 135 kilos fucking big dude he's fucking huge that's that's a giant person dude <laughs> 5 foot 6 yeah 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 and oh, a lovely guy as well which yeah, is nice. Wow. Which has nothing to do with his size. I no. know it's just an aside. Just a to... we've spoken about it before. I met this person. He was lovely. It's like it was surprising me when I meet people that they're nice, which is weird. Um, it was interesting, actually. Um, I'm gonna let me just divert for a second because the band did this gig, and we talked about it. I don't know. You haven't told me what no, you were no, talking about. We talked about it on here. About what? About the gig. The, the you... I'm just a man gig. Uh, not at all. No. Really? Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking what about. What a dig. Okay. So, uh... That's not their catchphrase, is it? I'm just a man, what a dick? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Was it one of the, like, original... Stop it. ...ones that they... Stop it. I wasn't, kind of I wasn't thrown around. to the council meetings where they decided what it was going to be. Hashtag <laughs> on this. So, um, uh, long story short, uh, I'm Just a Man was uh, an event that started this year. So it turns out it, it was the inaugural event. It's, it's going to be continuing annually. Um... And we were the band was asked to play, so it was it was held on the anniversary of the the twentieth anniversary of Michael Hutchins's. Oh wow! Night, right, which is the twenty second of November. Yeah. Um, so it was Wednesday night, and the band we learnt about a dozen in excess songs to play, sort of in the tribute thing. So we did some other stuff besides party party rock and roll kind of thing, and yeah. then all these in excess songs, which was fucking great because. Uh, I really like singing in excess songs. <laughs> They're really good fun. Uh, yeah, of like course. Great fun songs yeah. and re- like interesting vocal, like all that kind of low stuff that he did and then kind of shouty, you know, like yeah, really good fun. Good fun. Um, so a whole bunch of speakers. Tom Downey was one of them. Ray Bonney, um, whose radio show I'm going to be going on soon. Cool. By virtue of the fact that we met at this thing. Really interesting lady, a huge advocate for men's mental health issues. Um, so, 
The point of the story being mm. that when Tom and the band and I were talking backstage, I asked him, now that he's kind of not an AFL footballer anymore, he's now doing like a landscaping business, um, like as his money earner, and then is just beginning uh, sort of the, the public speaking thing about his experiences with mental illness. Because he, he quit football because he, because uh, of mental health issues. And he, I said, so what is your, what's your social circle now after football? He said, mm. oh no, it's still, it's still all football. It's like football's, yeah. football's my life. And I said, did you, did you get a lot of support from, from the rest of the footballing fraternity? Like I said, not necessarily like the club bosses kind of thing, but the, the other players. He said, yeah, surprisingly, well, no, no, not surprisingly. It was really interesting that his, his go-to, and this is what I spoke about on stage, um, his go-to was surprisingly, I got a lot of support from the other players. Right. And then immediately kind of backpedaled, but it was just, I found it fascinating that, because there's few, in Australia, there's few kind of blokier pursuits than AFL. Like it's a, it's a fucking man's man's game. Interesting that you say that, yeah, but keep going. Do you not think so? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't play. Like I'm a fan, but I think, I, I think yes, I agree in many respects, but not because of the guys that actually get to play. No AFL because of the the support culture. A- that's absolutely yeah, what I mean. and also on the the grassroots level culture, the football clubs and the you know the guys that prop up the bar. Totally, um, what I'm talking about. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I because I from <laughs> every indication I get, particularly nowadays, um, the, for the young guys who are now the professional footballers, and I say the young guys, you know, that are in their you know late teens to late twenties. I think they're. I think I don't think that they live in that propping up the bar world of football. No, like, absolutely at, not. at all. They're, well, they're, most of them. Well, no, how would I know? I would but, imagine but, yeah, that they're incredibly them. dedicated and professional. The only way that they can perform at that level is to not necessarily be. That. Yeah, but, yeah. So yeah, um, we're obviously on the same. Yeah, page yeah, very now. much so. Yeah. And and the thing I I said when I and I didn't talk for long, and it was between songs. And it was very much off the cuff, but it was it was on the back of having had this conversation with. With, um, with Tom Downey, this footballer, was that that it was interesting to be involved in an event that was centred on men's health issues, and I feel like so often when when we talk about um, depression and the things that lead to it in today's society, that it's it's not a men or a women thing like we all we all experience so many of the same pressures and situations uh, so it was it was weird to kind of be on stage and talk about it and feel like I kind of wanted to be all encompassing but being very aware that I was at an event that was all to do with raising awareness and funds for for men's mental health but anyway I said was that uh, and I've experienced this myself and that was the crux of what I was saying, is that when we identify who we are as people um, by what we do, it's a, it's a, it can be a really slippery slope. For me, when I've had vocal issues, serious vocal issues, and thought, fuck, that's, a, that's it, like 10 years ago when it happened to me, hmm. I thought, fuck, my career's over. What the fuck do I do now? That, we need to be finding more stuff more, more more stuff to be focused on more stuff to I wonder if um, I mean I I uh, recognise what you're saying having been through a, a career disappearing off the face of the earth you know having and been yeah. you know, going through that absolutely and not just with the threat of what do I do now because I might not be able to mm. continue it's like oh I actually can't continue to be to work in this role anymore it doesn't exist this is the cinema thing yeah the, so being uh, you know, you're managing a cinema, or just working in a cinema projection mm. room so uh, it, it's definitely something I'm st- I still struggle with because I because I can't escape 
all these things about film, even mm. going to see one today, and the projector not working, yeah, yeah. just going, well, fucking hell, yeah. there was someone working here. Um, so I, I do know that it's like, I also want to, I mean, you just said, um, this, we need to do more. I th- I think there's a, uh, my reaction to that is that we need to do less. I mean more work. W- uh, work. More work. Yeah, well, I yes, I don't, I, I don't, I don't mean more things. Yeah, but I, I think I, I think there is a. I think in order to do more work, we need to understand that practically everything anyone does, it, practically everything anyone does has got nothing to do with how to live a good life. Yeah. So you, our jobs, the things that we put our time. I mean, we we put our identity into being a projectionist, a singer, a footballer. They are those things are in essence completely meaningless to how to live as a as a person with friends family yeah f- uh, finding our food shelter and they because we have solved the basic problems of life we we have invented this complexity which I don't think evolutionarily we're capable of dealing with particularly well which is why I think as society gets more complex and as technology infiltrates our lives more and we suddenly can you know, like have the computer processing power ten times the amount of computer processing power that went to the moon yeah. in our hands, and really not understand where that came from. Like it cr- creates this other other problems, mm. which yeah, I can completely understand. It's, um, I think that's why I had an emotional reaction to that film today as well, because he's so sincere about what he's trying to do. It always is like he's operating at a completely different level to Absolutely. anyone else. And, and, no one, and everyone's like thinking, this is how we make a film. And he's like t- trying to t- say, don't think about how to make a film. Yeah. We're making a film. Yeah. You know, about people and about connection and about... And when you... Yeah. If, if you happen to choose to watch this film called The Room, um, he is... Like there's real... I mean, because he's so ham-fisted about the way everything's delivered but it's so clear that what he's trying to do is in his own frame of reference and his own um, kind of sphere of intent he's trying to make the world a better place yeah, he actually yeah. genuinely is he when he says if everyone would just love each other more the world would be that's why I want to live on planet Tommy where just everyone is and it's just it's really heartbreaking I'm gonna uh, cry yeah <laughs> oh man I'm, I make myself laugh <laughs> yeah anyway that's all yeah. oh, I understand yeah yeah so it's all it's worth saying I'm gonna have a what else got anything else um I'm going to talk about parking and how dumb the parking rules are. But that that adds to it. <laughs> that, you know, I really do believe that. I mean, we've spoken about the, the absurdity of things of things like that. But you just go, okay, so I, I pay for parking for two hours. You've created, you've invested tens of millions of dollars into an online system that allows me to not even have to walk over and put money into a machine and put a ticket on my dashboard. I can do it all from an app. And I can pay for the allotted time, but I still have to move my car after two hours mm. because I'm only allowed to stay there for two hours, even though I can continue to pay. It's just... It's fucking ludicrous. I mean, that's, that's where you kind of go, this society, is, it's, it's so... It's, it's complex beyond what it reconciliation. Be. Yeah. Like, yes. into, like you kind of go, I just can't... I can't reconcile in in me, in my brain, and in my emotional processing how anyone thinks that that kind of stuff is okay. It's like, okay, we want people to move their cars along, right, because we want everyone to have access to car parking. I, I, I get that, right? In which case, why make us pay for parking? Because we want to earn revenue. Okay, well, the, in which case, if we can pay... yeah. Why fine us for not moving our car? Like it, it just doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't make, make any sense. sense. No. Absolutely not. Yeah, and it's, which is why it's, it's 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 if it's actually offensive. That's why I refuse to move my car. 
Oh, look, that's I've, why I have. To, it's not all the reason I have twelve sheriff's warrants out against. Well, me, I've, but it's yeah, part of it. I've written those letters to say, hey, uh, I paid, and when it got to the end of the thing, like I paid, and they're like, yeah, but we've got we've paid to put sensors under, like in the road. What? Yeah, so so they know if you haven't moved your car. What? There's a sensor in there. That's, no. That's why I say they've invested. Yeah, yeah. They've. This is not me on my like oh fingerprints like, <laughs> you know, conspiracy theory, right? So part of that infrastructure spending in order to put in facilities so you can pay on your phone to park your car is a sensor underneath you the vehicle. Ah, joking. So you can park there all day if you want, but they know you haven't moved a car because the sensor hasn't been deactivated and then activated again. So when you write them a letter to say, hey, I paid for this time, I was there from blah, 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 to blah, blah, blah. They're like, yeah, we know. Yeah, we know. We know. You didn't move your car. You're supposed to move your car. Otherwise, it would just be a P instead of a 1P or a 2P Get or a 4P. Out Which is why I say it's the city. impossible to like reconcile that as, as a reasonable thing to do to people. And as I say, that's why I just refused. I, 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 I'm a conscientious objector. <laughs> I can't deal with shit like that. Yeah. And I, I won't. Yeah. I fucking won't. I'll pay like I did today. Yep. I, in the cinema. At 3.35. Bang, back on. Just quietly. Yeah, it's... um. Fuck! Yeah. Yeah, man. What are we going to do? Annex Lara. They'll do the same thing there. I don't know how long we've been going. Should we finish up? Yeah, we can finish up if you want. Okay. Oh, are you okay? Oh, I'm just... Are you yeah. now defeated by the world? No, no, no. Um, you sound sad. I'm sad because I. this is one of the highlights of my week, generally. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Not watching you cry. Oh, that doesn't happen. mention it again. It doesn't happen very often. Oh, no, I just mean, you know, I like to... In particular, the last couple of months where I've not really liked... Uh, enjoyed leaving my house much mm. when I haven't had to go to You've work. You've turned a corner. Yeah, I have. I know it's true because I read it on Facebook. Well, I even wrote it on Facebook twice. Mm. Well, I once even in a poem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Poem. poem. Did I pronounce that properly? Uh, I referred to it as prosatry. Prosatry. Nice. Last time. Yeah. Yeah. Don't call it suppository. <laughs> Surprising I did. Well, that's fine. What would you do do about Shut it? Shove it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's good. Yeah, all yeah, right. Yeah. That was two puns for the price of none. I think this is how, if we're ever going to actually have like a, 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 a show, like a comedy show, then we have to get together and just record and then script out the three funny things per hour that we say <coughs> and then have like a one minute funny thing. I do thing. think we should we should attempt to write something. Well after seeing the disaster hours today. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I've thought it before. Oh hey Mark. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. I, I um yeah, yeah, I've thought it before. Yeah. We okay. should actually attempt to write something. And go to Edinburgh. Oh Edinburgh. Yeah. Because yeah. we've got guitars to fall back on. It would be a musical comedy thing. I don't think I don't think there's any point in us not Oh it would be musical if you were there. That. Yeah. <laughs> Like, a, it'd be... Oh, wow, you just acted. Did I? Yeah, you just smiled and we went... Pew. Oh, yeah. yeah, lion face, lemon face. Yeah, yeah. it was impressive. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's write something. Okay. Cool. All right, let's do it now. Let's all have right. another beer first, though. Okay. Hey. All right. Uh, I drank a lot of beer in this very establishment yesterday. Did you? I got drunk at my gig. Good. And as we know, I'm not a big drinker. This is where this whole thing started out. My end is my beginning. I think it was Coleridge. Cholera. Cholera. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Oh. All right, then. See you later. Thanks for hanging out. Five-star review on iTunes, you fucks. <laughs> what he meant is you pretend to people. Oh, yeah. Is that how you spell it? How's that? Is I've that still you... got this muttly Is that how you pronounce thing. foe? Yeah, foe. Yeah, fucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Goodbye. See you later. Bye. Who's going to press the off button? No one. Damn it. I am. No. What? Let's just keep going. I'll take the mic with me. All right. Okay. We'll all have to go over there. Okay. All right. Bye. See ya.